Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. This weekly deal watch brought to you by Marijuana Business Daily. It's about cultivation, retailing, continue to dominate capital raises. Throughout the first two weeks of March, cultivation and retail continued to be the most attractive for capital raises, with the sector raising more than $2.7 billion during that period compared to $1.3 billion in the same period last year. Top raises that closed last week include Green Peak Innovations, a medical cannabis cultivator based in Michigan that raised more than $30 million in an oversubscribed debt round, which is interesting because generally it's equity. So if uh, they're financing debt, that means it's um, high demand. That means investors are willing to take on those assets. So that's good news. The funds are going to be used to support Green Peak's expansion in its home state, as well as plans to take the company's scalable model to other states. So multi-state operator is obviously the number one investment vehicle right now for Canadian companies um, that have access to capital, bringing that capital back to the states and then expanding state by state. Another top raise that closed last week is Toronto-based World Class Extractions, a privately owned cannabis extraction company that closed on a $22 million private equity placement. Alephia Health closed a $173 million acquisition of Ontario-based cannabis producer Emblem hurdling further consolidation in the cannabis marijuana industry. And then Texas-based Golden Developing Solutions closed its acquisition of CBD producer Infusion Z. Golden Developing CEO told Marijuana Business Daily the deal was valued roughly at $5 million. So which market has a bigger upside, the U.S. or Canada? While sales in both markets are predicted to continue to rise over the next few years, it appears that the American market that CBD could come out on top. For years, experts have predicted that if the cannabis industry expands at its current rate, the American market will reach $20 billion by 2020. But it turns out that one market's spinning off into a mega industry on its own. According to a new estimate from cannabis industry analysis, the Brightfield Group, the hemp CBD market alone could hit $22 billion by 2022. Look for Jennifer Crager on this podcast, August 14th at the World Trade Center in Seattle during Hemp Fest, talking all things cannabis. An article in Forbes is quoting the industry studies worldwide where they deem that the recreational market will continue to dominate. The North American cannabis market will go from 9 billion last year to 50 billion in 2027. Spending on legal cannabis worldwide is expected to hit 57 billion by 2027. According to ArcView market research over the next 10 years, the legal cannabis industry will see a lot of progress around the globe. Spending on legal cannabis worldwide is expected to hit 57 billion by 2017, according to ArcView, that's going to happen 10 years faster than what Forbes is predicting. So the adult use market will cover 67% of the spending and medical marijuana will take up the remaining 33%. The largest group of cannabis buyers will be in North America, ranging from 9 billion in 2017 to 50 billion a decade later. The largest growth spread, however, is is predicted to be the rest of the world markets from around 50 million spent in 2017 to a projected 2.5 billion in 2027. And still the remaining difference between the US and Europe cannabis markets is that the US recreational use will dominate sales. With a budget of 1.3 trillion in healthcare spending, European government subsidized healthcare systems will bring the medical cannabis market to dominate Europe and become the largest medical market in the world. Germany alone has, I believe, 70 million potential patients, all covered by medical expenses. And cannabis is going to be exporting the majority since Germany isn't allowed to cultivate yet. Cannabis infused drinks could be a $600 million market by 2022. Infused drinks with cannabis derived compounds could swell to become a $600 million market in the U.S. within the next four years, outpacing the growth of other categories of retail cannabis products, according to analysts at Canaccord Genuity. Canaccord sees the demand for beverages featuring CBD or cannabidiol, the non psychoactive component in cannabis, reaching a $260 million market cap by 2022, up from the negligible revenue. The limited number of drinks contributes now, while the THC-based drinks could reach $340 million, up from $106 million expected this year. And so what will the long-term cannabis markets look like? Probably more mergers and acquisitions. And Forbes expects mergers and acquisitions as a big player in the cannabis markets starting to align with existing big brand conglomerates, possibly alcohol and tobacco producers. 
I think the majority of the consolidation capitulation and M&As will happen from Canada influenced capital coming in, but you're also going to see a lot of FOMO in the US. I just got two calls yesterday for automated joint rolling equipment and the individuals just decided based on a report because they saw the uh, the market cap that joints have being 12% of the market share uh, in the US and Canada roughly that they all of a sudden want to jump in and start investing. So there's going to be a lot of uh, late investors, novice investors, people who don't quite understand, but they just see where the money is at. And that's just now starting to happen. Forbes has always viewed the cannabis space as one that would eventually be dominated by large alcohol and tobacco pr producers. Companies with deep pockets to grow new brands, experience to navigate legal restrictions and distribution and the operational excellence to squeeze profitability from highly competitive marketplaces. They expect that there's a smaller artisanal farm that cater to connoisseurs or consumers looking for something a little different. Their view is something akin to the way that the beer market looks today with large producers dominating sales and new craft brewers popping up every day. But in cannabis, they believe that the majority of supply will be acquired and delivered by large alcohol and tobacco producers because the opportunity is so enormous and compelling for them. Tobacco and alcohol companies should want to participate in the first major consumer drug product to be legalized since maybe the end of alcohol prohibition in 1933. So whether you think the global opportunity is 75 billion or 250 billion, it's a huge new market and companies like Constellation Brands, Philip Morris, Molson Coors and others will be compelled to participate by the possibilities of this new global market. U.S. cannabis industry to flourish in 2019, but who gains? The cannabis industry has strong potential, especially after legalization for recreation and medicinal use. Moreover, the industry is getting benefits from expansion into other industries like food, beverage, tobacco, and cosmetics. Growing legalization of recreation or medicinal marijuana is likely to bolster investors' confidence in this industry. Legalization has long been considered a boon for the marijuana industry. Canada has become the first major world economy and the second country after Uruguay to legalize recreational use of cannabis. Cannabis is getting official approval from many U.S. states for recreational uses, in addition to medical usage. Though pot remains entirely illegal at the federal level, currently 33 states have green-lighted medical use cannabis, while 10 states have allowed recreational use. The cannabis industry is considered as extremely volatile. Most of these companies are in the early stages of development and characterized as risky for investors. However, this industry has been providing fabulous returns to investors in 2018 before legalization in Canada. Since the industry is in its nascent stage, even a minor negative may become the cause of major stock price fluctuations. Notably, in October of 2018, a news of shortage supplies resulted in a panic selling as investors looked to offload risky stocks. According to some industry experts, 5 to 10% share price volatility daily should not be considered as unnatural for this industry. Major U.S. listed cannabis companies are likely to gain from the industry's early stage boom. As evidence of strong demand in the U.S., pot companies have engaged in deals as of late. In the last one year, share prices of major cannabis companies such as Tilray, Kronos, Canopy Growth, and GW Pharmaceuticals have jumped 213, 175, 77, and 51 percent respectively. Evidence of cannabis normalization keeps rolling in with BlackRock, a huge hedge fund, disclosing an $11 million investment in the medical marijuana firm Curaleaf. BlackRock is one of the world's largest money managers and disclosed in regulatory filings that its funds have an estimated $11 million stake in Curaleaf Holdings, a Massachusetts-based medical cannabis company. And while the investment is tiny for BlackRock, which has nearly $6 trillion of assets under management, the stake is one of the first publicly disclosed investments by a major institutional investor into U.S. cannabis. Most institutional bankers and banks have stayed on the sidelines for investing in cannabis businesses that touch the plant. But BlackRock's investment makes it the largest institutional investor, at least in Curaleaf. BlackRock wasn't waiting for any approval, and yet we still saw a major move last week among a bill scheduled for markup last Tuesday, the U.S. House Committee on Financial Services is the Secure and Fair Enforcement or Safe Banking Act, which would provide federal protection for banks serving state legal cannabis businesses. The legislation, which has been dormant in Congress for several years, received its first committee hearing last month under a new Democratic-controlled House of Representatives. It would prevent federal banking regulations from punishing banks for working with cannabis-related businesses that are complying with state laws. So according to the National Cannabis Industry Association, or NCIA, the bill would also require the Financial Institution Examination Council to develop guidance to help credit unions and banks understand how to lawfully serve cannabis businesses. 
Canadian company Asin Industries saw the writing on the wall with flour prices declining. And so they maybe jumped a little bit too quick and sold some oil. And then Health Canada slapped them last year and they continued to sell it. And then they lost their license. Asin Industries is the, I believe, first and only company that has completely lost their license as a result of um, not following the rules. So as a result of losing their license, they have to piecemeal all of their property, plant and equipment, all of their assets. And so they are set to sell their Canadian cannabis operations for $41.5 million. The company's creditor arrangement, pursuant to which the vendors have agreed to sell the purchaser substantially all of the assets comprising the Canadian business of the vendors, and the purchaser has agreed to assume certain liabilities of the vendors, including the vendor's obligations to purchase a greenhouse located in British Columbia. The aggregate value of the transaction is approximately 41 million, comprised of 20, 29 million in cash considerations to be paid for the Canadian assets and the assumption of liabilities of, of approximately 12.5 million. ASINT, through its subsidiaries, will continue to own the assets related to their cannabis cultivation, production, distribution, research, and product development businesses outside of Canada in Oregon, Nevada, and Denmark. Last I heard, they were losing their Nevada license, though, because they held improper or illegal events, and they also weren't in compliance, and it was taken into consideration that they're losing their Canadian license. It's all a little bit surreal for me. I was up there a year ago trying to help them with the automation and joint and blunt rolling equipment, and then all of this came out, and it's, it's been kind of crazy to see. But it's, it's early. It's a nascent industry. I'm sure we're probably going to see a lot more of these, but it's really unfortunate because there was some good people in that company. And with that, we're going to roll this one up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. <laughs>